Pastor Benny Hinn is celebrating 40 years of ministry, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. Look to our precious Jesus today, who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that comes into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and knew him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Of his fullness have we received grace for grace. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. We've got to understand that the Son of God... When the Word of God declares in the beginning was the Word, He's the pre-existent Word. He's the everlasting Word. So this Jesus, this amazing Savior, who's going to heal and touch your life and make you whole tonight, this precious Lamb of glory that stands tall and holy, this man of Galilee, carpenter from Nazareth, this amazing man, Amazing God, fully man, fully God. God in the flesh who walked among men. And when they saw him, they were amazed as they looked upon him going up the hills of Galilee. The Bible tells me that he is the eternal word. The word, the revelation of who God is that became flesh. Took upon himself the form of flesh. The same was in the beginning with God. This amazing word, this eternal word, is also the personal word. For the Bible says uh, the same was in the beginning with God, personal God. All things were made by Him, creative word. In the beginning was the Word. That's eternal. With God. Personal. All things were made by Him. Creative. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. Not only is this word eternal, not only is this word personal, not only is this word creative, but life-giving in him was life. And then verse 5 says, and the light shines in darkness. Not only is he the life-giving word, he's the light-giving word. This Jesus we talk about, who is he? He's the eternal word of God. He's the personal word of God. He's the creative word of God. The Bible tells me that he's the life-giving word of God. He's the light-giving word of God. But more than that, For it says, that was the true light that lights every man that comes into the world. Not only is he the light-giving word, 
He's the illuminating word. He's the one who reveals you to yourself. You see that God Almighty reveals His Son in this amazing portion of Scripture. He's eternal. Jesus is eternal, the eternal Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That to me reveals the eternal Master, whom we call Jesus. Jesus, the Son of Mary. Jesus, the Son of David. Jesus of Nazareth, the man Christ Jesus. Eternal, personal, creative. That's why when he touched mud, he turned mud into eyes. That's why he can walk on water. That's why he can speak a word and the dead are raised. Life giving. Light giving. Illuminates every man who comes to him. Illuminates you be because the second you come to Jesus, all darkness is canceled in your life. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Who is he? The saving word. Not only is he eternal, not only is he personal, not only is he creative, not only is he life-giving, not only is he light-giving, not only is he illuminating, the Bible tells me he's also saving. Saving word. As many as received him to them, give you power to become the sons of God, even to them who believe on his name. That's salvation right there. When you come to Jesus, it's impossible not to receive his salvation. Of his fullness, have we received grace for grace? Every time I read this, I see him as the gracious word. There are seven revelations in just those few verses of Scripture. He is the gracious word of God. For the law was given by Moses. Oh, this is marvelous but grace through Jesus. But I want to finish with this one, and I'm going to put it last, even though it's mentioned earlier. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The incarnate Word. The man Christ. Eternal. Personal. Creative. Life-giving, light-giving, illuminating, saving, gracious, and flesh. The man, Christ Jesus. When they saw him, they were amazed. He's the man, Christ Jesus. It's amazing to me that in chapter 2, of John, he is revealed as the Son of Man. The Word of God in John 1. The Son of Man in John 2. Mm. Divine Teacher in John 3. Because it was in John 3 verse 2. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, teacher, we know you come from God and you know you're a teacher. I, the Holy Spirit, has placed in the Gospel of John the most amazing revelation of this man. We call the Messiah. Seven revelations right up top of who the Word of God is. And then presents him in chapter 2 
the man, Christ. In chapter 3, divine teacher. In chapter 4, soul winner. Because in chapter 4, he won that woman at the well. In chapter 5, the great physician. Will not be made whole. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost here. Lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. There we see the Messiah. The man Christ Jesus in chapter 2. The divine teacher in chapter 3. The soul winner in chapter 4. The great physician in chapter 5. In chapter 6, verse 35, I am the bread of life. In chapter 7, the water of life. In chapter 8, the defender of those who are weak. People are getting healed even while I'm ministering. Chapter 9, the light of the world. Jesus said, for judgment, I'm coming to this world. That they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. He said, I am the light of the world in this great chapter. The good shepherd in chapter 10. The resurrection and the life. In chapter 11. The king. In chapter 12. The servant. Chapter 13. Who is this Jesus? Who is this amazing Messiah? The Bible tells me that this blessed Lord is eternal and personal and creative and life-giving and light-giving and illuminating and saving and gracious and a physical person who walked the earth. And then it introduces him in this most amazing way, the Holy Spirit as the man Christ and the divine teacher and the soul winner and the great physician. And you, and you are amazed as you read the Gospels. And you see him in chapter 13 washing the feet of his disciples. And he's the great comforter in chapter 14. The vine, the true vine in chapter 15. And, and there the baptizer and the Holy Ghost in chapter 16. And in chapter 17, he's the great prayer warrior, the great intercessor for our souls. These that thou hast given unto me, I have lost none, save the son of perdition. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. The suffering Messiah in chapter 18. The Savior, the uplifted Savior, in chapter 19. If I be lifted up, and he was, lift your hands and say, Jesus. Whisper that blessed, precious name, Jesus. The great conqueror over death. Of chapter 20. Quickly come stand behind me with your microphones. That, that anointing is going gonna, is gonna to fall real quick here. You got it there, yeah, Greg. Just right on. Yeah. There is something about that 
in chapter 21, he, he's re the, the restorer of human lives. My God. Jesus. Mm. He, he, he restored Peter in that chapter, people. He didn't condemn him. The man who denied him. What happened in that chapter? He said, Peter, do you love me? Wow, Jim. Never once did the Son of God look at Peter and say, Why did you do that? Why did you deny me? Never. He reached out to him and said, You love me? Yeah, Lord. Peter, you love me? Yes, Lord. What was he doing? He was restoring him to himself. You love me? Yeah. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep. Restored Peter. Keep singing that precious name. And that's how the book ends. That's how the book ends. The Restorer of Men. Lift your hands and call his name. Stand up and, and, and worship him. Come on. Lift your hands and worship him. There's miracles happening, James. All over this building. There's miracles happening all over this place. Brian, can you help me down there? Just go down the aisles and, and, and find those healings. Come on, Tim. You too. Find those healings. said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. What a promise. What an amazing promise. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. 
He loves you. His love is eternal. And all you have to do today is come to the Master. Give him your pain and disease. Give him your trouble. Just cast all your cares on him. How he loves you and cares for you. If all the angels in heaven stood before God demanding that he quits loving you, he'd say no. Paul wrote, I am persuaded of neither death or life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present or things to come or height or depth or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Not one time did God look at Gabriel or Michael or any of the angels and say, I love you. But to us, he says, I love you with an everlasting love. Today, give him that problem. Please, don't keep it. Don't hold on to it. You don't know what to do with it anyways. Just give it to Jesus. Just surrender it to the Lord. Let's pray right now. Let's believe God together that the need in your life, your home, with your family, your marriage, your finance is done, taken care of, because he promised it. Father, your word declares it's not by might nor by power. But by my spirit, saith the Lord. Just stretch your hands towards me right now. Come on, I'm feeling the anointing of God here. Stretch your hands towards me or place your hand on your body if, if you need healing in your body. Or just lift your hands to heaven and just say, Dear Jesus, just call on him. Father, right now we come into agreement. Every need is met. Every problem canceled. Your word declares casting all our cares on you because you care for us. You said, come on to me, all you labor, all you who are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Sweetest Jesus, we give you our pain. We give you our sorrows. We give you our troubles. We give you our sickness, everything, Lord. Right now, we lay it at your feet. And dear Jesus, as your people do that, as that one watching this program does that, let them feel your blessed touch. Lord, bring healing to those in need of healing. Peace to those in need of peace. Joy to those in need of joy. Liberty to those in need of liberty. Right now, Lord, lay your healing hand upon everyone calling upon your name. I give you praise. There's someone watching me, a lady is watching me, with a growth on your neck. The growth is going down. Dear Jesus, I give you praise. Arthritis, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. A liver infection in someone's liver is just being healed. I give you praise. Skin cancer is being healed. I give you glory, wonderful Lord Jesus. Swelling in someone's right foot, real bad. The Lord is healing that somebody that I'm talking to. Receive your healing. Listen, I don't have to call out every healing. All you have to say is, dear Jesus, touch me and he'll do it. That's right, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me, is what God says to us. So call on him now. I promise you the Lord will answer that prayer. For it's not by might or by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Recently, Steve Muncy was on This Is Your Day with Pastor Benny Hinn, and he presented a great opportunity for you to experience a miracle which will turn your situation around. The very person that is watching today, you're watching on purpose. You, you may be a regular watcher of This Is Your Day, but today is different. Because as the prophet or the man of God has come into your place where you're watching this, so it was in 1 Kings, where the Bible said to the man of God, I have commanded a person to meet you. The Bible said it was Zarephath, but in right now the Holy Spirit is saying right where you are, what city you live in, your community, your apartment, your house. And God has spoken to us. And this is the word of the Lord that we have heard from his word. Steve, Tell Pastor Benny Hinn, I have commanded. The Bible says that Elijah was told, you go to this such and such place, and I have already commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. The power 
of the offering of sustainment of a ministry is probably one of the most powerful things you can do in the Bible. It is the quickest that I have observed out of the 66 books, 747,000 words in the Bible of a miracle and a reaping and sowing. The Bible says when he got to Zarephath, he didn't even know the woman's name. I don't know your name, sir, ma'am. But I can tell you that God has already spoken. And God is saying, Steve, you'll look into the camera with Pastor Benny Hinn. And I will already have set it up that you're to speak to them. And this is what the Bible says. The Bible says that the prophet said, would you give me a drink of water? And then he said, would you give me something to eat? And the Bible says, at first she was fearful, but he says, give it to me. And the Bible says he prayed over that person. And when he did, it was an instant miracle. Let me tell you what I feel. The law of sustainment, to sustain this ministry of Benny Hinn. This is an offering of sustainment, one of the most powerful offerings you can give. And I'm sensing that right now that you step to the phone and say, I'm going to plant my seed of $300. I'm going to plant my seed. Now, for some of you who say, I don't have $300. Then you go to the phone and say, here's my $30 of a sustainment offering to the ministry. I promise you, in the name of Jesus, as quick as she gave it to the man of God, and it happened to be her last meal, that the Bible says immediately that meal barrel was filled and the oil of crews was filled because it was the offering of sustainment. If I've ever felt anything in my life, I feel this is a moment, but already God has spoken to you and said, Steve, if you say it, I will command the person to watch, to respond. Step to the phone and give the offering of sustainment and watch God do something in the next 24 hours in your life. Go to the phone right now and say, this is what I'm going to give, that $300 offering, $30, that $60 offering. You must do it now and do not fear because God is getting ready to do a miracle like you have never experienced before. Pray for them quickly. Father, I pray them. right now, just Amen, as the prophet Lord. said, fear not. Somebody is wow. fearing and saying, I don't know if I should or not. But yeah. Father, Lord, this is going to turn their business around, their child around. Yeah. It's going to change their marriage. It's going to change their health. And in the name of Jesus, this offering of sustainment, God, as they go to the phone, is, is going to be a turnaround miracle. Yes, Lord. And Father, I speak, I speak to that special person because you have already planned that we would speak this. Yes. And you've already talked to them that they would do this. Yes. Now, release that upon them in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Name. Please, please, Amen. whatever you do, go to the phone right now and give the offering of sustainment.